Well, good morning, North Shore family. How's everybody doing on this rainy, cold Sunday morning? Yes, we're great. It's wet and cold out there, and that's all right, you know, because it's, it's nice and dry and warm in here. So thank you uh, to those here in person uh, joining us, and it's just so good to be together, uh, even when it's cold, uh, to be together to worship God, to learn a little bit more about his character every, uh, every time we get together and just to praise him. And I know we got people joining us online as well, uh, whether you're watching it now or later in the week. Thank you for joining us and, and for uh, just being included in this in this process and, and praising God with us uh, from your home, f- on the road, wherever it is you happen to be. So um, I'm going to stop talking. We're going to do some do some praise and worship, some songs here. And uh, I encourage you to join in if you're at home. I encourage you to join in if you're here in person. So here we go. By his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, his life is destined. All praise. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has 
the truth, the foundations of our faith. God the Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, man, is good. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. the troubles we face or the direction you're going God we trust you we follow you and we worship you thank you in your name we pray have a seat for just a minute good morning good morning uh, on a wet cold uh, January glad you're here it's going to be a, a good time together uh, and I want to greet those that are online with us 
I've got, got a lot to Linda and the Tamarelli uh, family. I know uh, Matt had shoulder surgery this week and is recovering. Uh, Patty, uh, Rita, Maggie, good morning. Uh, Dana and Lana and the kids. Miss Donna, good morning. Uh, to Emily and Kirk, good morning. Uh, to the Hinesleys and the Raisies, so good morning to, to all of y'all. Uh, and, and it's great to, to be together. This morning we're going to be talking about uh, following God's will. And so looking forward to that time together. Uh, as we pray and we welcome uh, folks still coming in, I uh, want to remind you if you could join us as we pray so that we're praying for these things and not just listing off. So if you would pray specifically for uh, Johnny's son is looking for a, a new job and his dad's birthday is tomorrow and he's recovering from back issues. And so if you just pray for uh, Johnny's uh, family. In Jesus' name. And the petties are traveling, and Matt's recovering from shoulder surgery. Uh, happy birthday to Katie yesterday. Uh, and uh, so uh, several things going on. Maybe you've got something uh, that nobody really knows about except God. And you know what? That's a good place to be because uh, in his strength, uh, things change. And so maybe let's pray for those things that aren't voiced right now. And so if you've got something that you just need to whisper and give over to God, you can do that. Uh, and then pray specifically for that person that just needs God to show up. You ever just been where you need God to show up? Uh, let's pray for that even now. Lord, we say we love you and we uh, recognize your hand uh, and um, we surrender uh, because it's in your strength that we are made strong. It's not our own. And we look to you even now and for those things that are unvoiced, those unmet needs, those unanswered questions, uh, those, those hurts and frustrations we can't seem to get past. For a moment, we release those to you and we surrender and ask that you would show us something uh, through your living, powerful word and minister to our heart and our need right now that we may fully release those things in praise and worship to you. We declare your holiness and your beauty and your might. Uh, we focus on your nature and your character, and we pray that our hearts would be drawn and aligned for your will and for your glory. It's all this in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord, oh Jesus, Jesus, how I trust.
your name it stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cry holy you are lifted high holy holy forever hear your people Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's there. Which I said. 
of a God who never fails, one who can be counted on in every season throughout all generations. No matter what we see with our eyes, hear with our ears, whatever's going around us, going on around us in the world, God, you never fail. You are always in control, and your love is unwavering. God, we can trust in you. We can follow your plan. We can follow your will and know that it's good. Because, God, we know what happens when we try to do it on our own. We know that it comes crashing down around us. It's never as good as it could be if we just lean into you, God, and know that you never fail. You love us. And, God, we worship you this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for singing. Yes, and amen. Good way to... Uh, just refocus our minds, heart, and attention uh, on the Lord as we sing his praises and we think of who he is and how he, he is holy and how he is righteous and, and how he is uh, uh, amazing and beyond our senses can even uh, c comprehend. And it lets us know what really is. Uh, and so thank you, thank you for, for doing that this morning. Uh, and I just echo that as, as we lean into God's word and uh, praying for you as you would pray for, for me, that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart would be pleasing in his sight because he's my rock and my redeemer, Psalm 1914. This morning, following God's will. Sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? You know, I, tr I truly want to follow God's will. But too often, I take matters into my own hands and end up in the penalty box. You know what the penalty box? I mean, in ice hockey, it, I, I think we need a penalty box. You know, in ice hockey, if you have a minor penalty, you know, like uh, you, you do some kind of uh, bending, bending of the rule or, or you just do some kind of misconduct, they go sit you and parade you right in the middle of everybody in a glass thing uh, and give you just a timeout. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, maybe we, we could u use some of those. This morning, we're going to learn lessons following God's will, even when you've decided to go through the penalty box. Well, why do people take matters into their own hands? Maybe you're impatient. You know, uh, it, it's, it's like... I've waited long enough, or I, I see this opportunity, uh, and so we take matters into our own hands by going, okay, I want to follow you, and then we just kind of push that inside, you know, no, I want to do this now, or I want to act on it now, or I, it, it just doesn't seem to be happening uh, fast enough. Or, or maybe uh, you've had a moment like me to where you go, it's my right. Do they not realize who I am? This is Josh McClary. Uh, and, and we kind of have that moment where we're going, come on, people. Uh, uh, and, and we take matters into our own hand. Or maybe you've tried to just do it in your own strength. Huh? We've all tried that. Maybe if I just try harder. Maybe if I just read more. Maybe if I just do more, then it's going to put it over the top. Uh, it's going to happen. And so we just try, and we just try, and we wear out, and we wear out. Uh, and, and we wonder why... Uh, we're not getting any movement anywhere. Or maybe you just bow up and go, but somebody needs help, and I'm here to help them. I mean, you see this injustice happening, and it's just like it just swells up in you, and you're just like, I just must act now. I just must act now. I just got to do something. And so we take matters into our own hands trying to work this out. Or maybe even when it comes to faith, you just go, you know what, I think I can find a better way to fill me up than what God says can fill me up. And so whether you take a step back from faith and try to do it your own way or just try to figure it out, we take matters into our own hands. Now, the thing is, this can easily happen to good people 
with good motives and good intentions. I mean, people like you and me, this can happen to us all. Uh, ha- have you done this maybe at your job to, to where you're like, things aren't moving fast enough like I want to, and so maybe you say more than you should or you do more than you should, uh, and you kind of lean into and you try to take matters into your own hands. Doesn't noise in very well, does it? Or, or maybe in relationships, you've been patient long enough and you've been trying to fix this and you've been doing all the work uh, and maybe you're the, the, you know, the parents or, or maybe you're, it's with the kids or maybe it's with uh, someone else or, or someone close and so you just, you just get impatient uh, and you try to, to fix it. You take matters into your own hands. It doesn't work out. Or maybe you just see this justice thing going on, and you just must act on it. Uh, maybe it's not your place, or it's not the right time, and yet you do uh, anyway. Or, or, or maybe in, in the faith category, you just try to fill yourself up yourself instead of trusting God. And there's all these things around us. And the good thing, as we've been studying Moses, Moses is one that struggled with following God's will. Uh, and he followed it when he was having the best of circumstances, and he had to learn to follow it when he was having the, the worst of circumstances. Why should we turn to the Bible? Why should we turn to, to God in trying to figure out and walk uh, in, in certain ways? Ways that would honor and glorify Almighty God. Why, why should we do that? I, I see a beautiful example in the life of Jesus. Think about it. Jesus modeled for us on this earth what following God's will looks like. He was dependent upon the relationship uh, to to know what to do and what to say and the timing with that. And, And you look throughout Scripture and we get to see Jesus was always right on time. Jesus always knew who to speak to. And for how long? And for what they needed. He, he always knew what would make the greatest difference. He always knew how to, to engage those relationships that were close to him. And he modeled that. And he always knew when to pull aside and get refilled uh, with the Father and with the Spirit. He, he modeled this for us. I, I, I love what I see in, in John 5.30 that says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Because I seek not my own, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus lived a life of surrender to following God's will. And let me tell you, it was a life of fullness. It was a life of richness. It was a life of beauty. It's a life we study and we need to model our lives after. You know, as I see uh, in Moses, he was struggling taking things into his own hands. And we're talking about Exodus chapter 2, starting really in verse 11 through 15. But I'm going to read the account that's given by Stephen, uh, the, 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 the servant deacon uh, in uh, Acts chapter 7, as he recounts this story in Acts chapter 7, uh, starting in verse 20. And he says this, At this time... Moses was born. I I like to pause there for a second, uh, even referencing back uh, to the way that Exodus 2 records it. It just says one day. I'm reminded that today matters. I I mean, this moment matters. God is up to something because he still has us here. And so could you just open your mind's eye to the excitement of this time matters. As Moses' time and Moses' day mattered, uh, so does it matter uh, for, for us in this time. He says that this time Moses was born, and he was beautiful in God's sight. Now, this wasn't just that he was a, a very, uh, you know, a, attractive child. It was like God saw in him something, and God had destined for him uh, to do something uh, that, that, would, that, w- that would literally change the world. Uh, and, and, and so God saw something in him, and he was brought up for three months in his father's house. How? We, we learned that last week in faith. I mean, his parents were in faith. They passed it forward in faith, and so he was brought up in faith. And when he was, he was exposed, in other words, he couldn't, because of the decree, uh, he, he, he was not going to be able to stay in his, his parents' house. Uh, and his, his mom and his dad chose to give him up for adoption. And by God's providence, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. Now think of this. The Hebrew race 
was in bondage, in captivity, as slaves. And Moses is rescued and taken to the palace. This would be like, go to your worst, worst place. Now, uh, we all come from different parts of, of, of the world where you, you could go. Now, if there was a certain part of the city that was like the worst, think of that place. And then you pick them up, put them on a jet, clean them up, and you give them a wing of the White House. That's what happened to Moses. I mean, he went from nothing and nothing, nothing to everything. And there was no other, history probably uh, refer, refers to it in extra biblical literature at the time, there was no other male heir to the, to, the, to the throne of Pharaoh besides Moses. Moses was on his way up. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He probably learned three different languages of the time, uh, military strategy, how everything ran. It, it, it goes on and says, and he was instructed in all the wisdom, and he was mighty in word and deeds. In other words, this guy had some charisma. This guy had some influence. This guy had it going on. When he was 40 years old, now think about that for a second. Maybe you're not yet 40 years old. Maybe 40 years old was a long time ago. But you go, this was not just, he was, you know, just fresh out of school. He, he was not a senior. I mean, this, 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 he had been around a while. When he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers. His, he, he knew his heritage the children of Israel. And seeing one of them being wrong, uh, and, I, and I like Exodus 2.12, it says, he looked this way and that. In other words, he saw something that was an injustice, and he, you're going to see him grab it and go, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. I see that it's wrong, and I know I can do something about it. So he became judge uh, and, and, and justice all in one thing, and he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He killed somebody. What? He looked this way. And he looked that way, but he didn't look up. He took matters into his own hands. Uh, did, did he know God's will at that point? I think he had a, 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 a welling up as he studied and, and, and as he learned and as he, he cultivated the faith and, and, and the reminders from uh, his roots of, of the one true God. And, and yet he even thought, maybe I'm the deliverer that... that I'm hearing people cry for it. Maybe I'm that. And so he took it into his own hands and tried to do something about that. But it was not God's timing and God's plan at that point. So what happened? He got in trouble. Charles Swindoll said this. He, Moses, dedicated himself to the will of God let this soak in, but not the God whose will it was. Now that makes my brain hurt a little bit. Let it soak in a little bit. He dedicated himself to the will of God, but not to the God whose will it was. Any time that we put even anything above God, what is that? An idol. And so even pursuing the will of God above God, it becomes an idol. Those times where we want the answer more than we want God, what has the answer become? An idol. And it's not God's timing. And it's not God's way. Now, did the taskmaster who was beating this man deserve punishment? Yes. Did the Hebrew deserve deliverance? Yes. But it was Moses' flesh that initiated deliverance, not the spirit. And there was trouble. We can always count on this. When you act in the flesh, you will always have to cover something up. 
that part of us that feels like we've got to not tell the whole truth when somebody's asking us about something? That's acting in the flesh. That part of us that has to, to kind of bend our motive a certain way, that's the flesh bubbling to the surface. F.B. Meyer said, Faith is only possible when we are on God's plan and standing on God's promises. If you look throughout Scripture, you find that Moses, even at that point, had great examples. I mean, he could have looked back and heard the, the, the story of Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve got impatient, or they thought God was holding out on them. And, and what happened? They took matters in their own hands, and they were in perfection. They were in perfect circumstances. They had no history. And yet, they took matters into their own hands, and things the wheels came off, right? Or, or maybe he could have heard the story of Abraham and Sarah and how God promised Abraham and he showed him which way to go and he promised that he would have a child that all of this would flow through through Sarah. And yet, after he waited a few years and it didn't happen, he took matters into his own hands. Galatians 4, 4 and 5 this morning. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. When we follow God's time and God's plan and his way, things change. It goes on to say, he supposed that Moses, he supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand. But they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to them. They were quarreling and tried to reconcile. he tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging his, his neighbor thrust him aside, saying, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Were those things that we hide in the sand, will they be found out? They will. He went from thinking that people are going to go, oh, here's Moses, to being humbled, to being rejected by his own. In fact, if we look at Exodus 2, 14 and 15, it, it describes the same event. Then Moses was afraid, and he thought, surely this thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. In other words, he hated Moses and drove him out of the land. And Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian. Wow, how things changed. Because he took matters into his own hands. And I think there's some lessons that we can learn about following God's will. And even like Moses, when he made some mistakes and took some things into his own hands, and he ended up in the penalty box, there's some lessons that we can learn. Can I encourage you with a few this morning? Discover God's will by seeking God's glory. That's so again again. Discover God's will by seeking God's glory. You don't have to find the answer to what specific thing that God wants you to do. If you seek his glory, you're going to run into it. It really looks like dying to self. To dying to self. Because that's what gets us in trouble. That's what causes us to pull things into our own hands, right? Because we get impatient. Because we have a right. Because we want to do things in our own strength. Because we think we need justice right now. Because we think that we can fill each other up. Discover God's will by seeking God's glory. It's a matter of dying to self. Now, don't get me wrong here. Is this hard? I mean, Moses made such mistakes, it altered his whole life, and he spent 40 years in the wilderness. Hello. You know, in, in seeking and trying to live out and know God's will, it'd be real easy for us, well, just give me the formula, and I'll go do that, and everything will be good. And life doesn't always work out that way, does it? In fact, most of the time, it doesn't at all. And when you think of dying to self, 
That's hard. That's a constant battle. That's not just a one-time choice. That's not just a, I'm good and let's move on. Dying to self is this ongoing process. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, man, that kind of puts a bubble around everything, doesn't it? That I would be about doing all to the glory of God. This is not just something, and I have this on a sign in my my kitchen. I get it. This is not just something to put on a sign. This is something, this is a way to live life. Is, is this to God's glory? If it's not, you probably need to cut it out. If it's, if it's not, you probably need to get rid of it. If it is, get on it. You, you know what I'm saying? If it's for God's glory, get in on it. Discover God's will by seeking God's glory. It's not easy, though. We follow God's will by surrendering our will. Now, can I get specific here? You follow God's will by surrendering your will. We need to practice placing our specific hopes and dreams and hurts and worries and injustices and desires and gifts and frustrations and fears and talents hopes and dreams all these things at the feet of jesus before we act on them beth moore said any day not surrendered to the authority of the holy spirit will be automatically lived in the flesh Peter, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Humble yourselves. This is hard. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now, we live by the coast uh, here, and we see lots of people that would throw uh, uh, nets to catch bait. That's the same thing here. It's, it's telling us to throw our anxieties. It's telling us to even to throw our desires and our wants and our, and our wishes and our, uh, the things that, that get under our skin that maybe nobody else knows. Throw all these things to God. Why? Because following God's will means I'm going to surrender those things to him and then I'm going to act in his strength, not my own. I'm going to act in his strength, not my own. I remember there was an exercise uh, that I've uh, tried to do before uh, and whether that's writing, j- journaling down uh, those things that, that I know specifically are, are kind of getting me, and you just individually give those over to God uh, and cross them off as you do. Uh, maybe it's, it's just starting off your day going, God, I recognize you as my king, <laughs> and I'm not on the throne. You are, and I pause, and I start from there. You know, that can be done in just a minute, but it reminds you as you go down and as you come up, He's on the throne, not you. And if you really want to live out God's will, it takes some surrender. You know, we see that in the life of Jesus over and over. I mean, he continued to surrender so that God's ultimate plans and purposes and timing would all be done on God's plan. Acknowledge his right to rule and reign in your life every day. Now, that could take different amounts of times. Some days, that, mean, that may be just mean, God, I surrender to, to you, acknowledge you as, as king, and you don't have much on your plate, and you're just like, woo, let's keep going. Sometimes, you've got a list, and, and if you were to think even about your day, you would go, I know I'm going to run into this person, I know I'm going to have this interaction, I know this thing's going on in my life, I know I'm tension about this, I know I've got to pay some bills, and I know I've got to go to the doctor, and, I know, and, and we can get all those things, and all those things that are weighing us down, what do we need to do? We need to surrender to God, to surrender our will to His will. Now, does that mean He just takes them all and erases them? No. Our choice to surrender then strengthens us for what's next. That's why I think you can enjoy God's will by just walking by faith in the present. Paul said, from prison, don't miss this, from prison. I've learned in whatever situation, I am to be content. 
Don't, don't, don't miss this. From prison. Content? Unjustly accused and falsely imprisoned? In prison? I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how it is to be brought low. I know how it is to abound in any and every situation. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and being hungry. Abounding and in need. I can do all things through Christ, through him who strengthens me. The person who surrenders, the person who is trying to glorify God, is then empowered by God to do his will. So this morning, if you're just thinking you should just try harder and you'll figure it out, no, you won't. You will never get smart enough. You'll never get wise enough. I mean, look at Moses. He tried all that, right? I mean, he was in the smartest. He had the most uh, influence and affluence and everything else. And as soon as he took matters into his own hands, life fell apart. But once he started surrendering, things started changing. Moses had to learn that there could be fulfillment even in obscurity. Think of that. That God can fill me up even if nobody knows where I am and what's going on. See, God was doing a work in him so that later God could do a massive work through him. And so regardless of what season you're in, we need to learn how to follow God's will. Even when you feel like you're in the penalty box. And, and I asked this, what would it look like if you were actively engaged in following God's will this week? Huh? I mean, not just left here and, and kind of just went about your business, but what if you were actively engaged in following, hearing, knowing, and doing God's will? Can you imagine you going ahead and spending some time seeking to glorify God in all that you're doing, uh, and, and planning through your week and kind of thinking through your week, uh, that you would be surrendering daily your will to God and that you would be enjoying faith in the present? How would that change things? Or... You can ignore the lessons. Um, you can end up in the penalty box. And what happens if you don't learn the lessons that you got sent to the penalty box for? You get sent back to the penalty box over and over. So if you feel that frustration of going back and back trying to learn the same lessons, maybe it's time for a different way. I like the last phrase of Exodus 2, 15, where it says Moses was sent into the wilderness. I mean, he was sent into the penalty box. But it says that he sat down by a well. In other words, after all this, he went ahead and paused and he sat down by a well. And it's just, a, to me, a loving reminder that as Moses was refreshed by the Spirit from discovering and following and enjoying God's will. God's justice was served and Moses was filled to do God's purposes and God's plan in his perfect timing. And that's what I could pray for you and that's what I could pray for myself, that we would be following God's will, God's way. Let's pray together. God, thank you uh, that you give us steps uh, that you give us uh, uh, an invitation to live things out for your glory uh, and be a part of that. Uh, God, it is so hard at times not to take matters into our own hands when we really just need to surrender. I pray that you would give us a fresh and a new awareness of just trying to seek things for your glory uh, and surrendering those things that are already on us. And then just enjoying walking by faith. We look to you to strengthen us for this time. It's all this in Jesus' name that we ask. Amen. So next steps, we remind you, how could you encourage God? I mean, how could you glorify God and worship God even right now? Well, it, it, it comes back to your and my response. Recommit your life to the Lord. Recommit your life to, to living God's way and God's, uh, carrying out God's will.
I mean, that would be a beautiful thing. Uh, and cultivating spiritual habits. And then use your talents. You know, God has assembled us for a reason. Uh, and use your talents uh, to, to serve the Lord both here uh, and as he takes uh, us out on, on mission to share that to others for his glory. You know, I'm grateful that uh, Moses uh, was inspired by God to uh, write these things down so that you and I can have these lessons uh, today, too. Um, for those that are online, we're going to sign off and say, God bless you. Thanks for being with us and continue to connect with us. Uh, and uh, we'll be in touch with you. For those of us that are, that are here, we're going to round out today. By, we've got just a few questions to kind of help us to take it 